Hello and welcome everyone. This is Type Matters. First, thank you, Caro, for the warm introduction. And yes, I don't know which passion is greater in me, that for Star Wars or that for type. So I had to choose, but today I have taken the type side of the force. Um, I was really looking forward to this talk uh, because I'm really happy to share some of my love for type with all of you today. Before we dive into it, um, I would like to know from you, how many typefaces do you actually know by name? Can you guess? So please uh, participate in the poll, and I would like to see all of you voting. And also to our live audience, um, the question. So please raise your hand if you know more than three typefaces by name. Wow, OK. Then next question. Do you know more than six typefaces by name? OK. Well, anyone here who knows more than 10 typefaces by name? Wow. I'm really impressed. Uh, it seems we have already some type knowledge here. And this brings me to my second question. Which font, so your favorite one, would you pick for the next product you work on or for your next project? Please shout out the question, uh, the answer into the chat as well. <laughs> Comic Sans, great, Jessica. I, I thought you uh, talked about uh, resp um, responsibility and sustainable UX, but OK, I see. Um, anyone else? Futura, a nice simple one. Maybe Judith uh, can tell me some of the results from the chat and the poll. Ah, great. Okay, for next project. So please participate. I'm curious about your answers. Suns. Okay, the Suns. Ubuntu. Okay, open source font. Impact. Mm -hmm. It depends. <laughs> Zing Suns. Great choice. I will talk about this later. Papyrus, very old style. Wingdings, OK, if you can read the text then. Let's see. Otto Sans, well, Poppins. Ah, Poppins, the font uh, we have used here for the Sunday talks. Nice choice. Barlow Lobster, to be honest. That's a cheesy display typeface, but OK. Gossam, very classic. I really love this. Roboto, good choice. Fira, yeah. Possible Frutiger, Frutiger, also very nice. Oswald, Copper Black. Okay, so I see, um, I'm really impressed by all your answers over there. And uh, okay, so I would say we have a lot of type nerds already uh, in the audience. And I have to, um, I'm sorry. And from my point of view, I have to say type can be an addiction. And I have to admit that I'm addicted to type for, let's say, 11 years now. So please let me tell you uh, my story, how I found my way into type. It's around 2009, and I'm in the second year of my information design studies. I showed some interest in type during that time because type reminded me about architecture. Architecture in a very small way. The forms, the spacings the way how you construct fonts, everything reminded me about architecture. So one of my teachers told me I had to watch Helvetica, a great documentary made by Gary Hustwit, and I can highly recommend it. It's fun to, fun to see. So I bought a physical copy of this documentary because streaming was not a thing during that time, back in 2009. And I sit on my couch, started to watch this documentary about this one particular and famous typeface called Helvetica. During this doc documentary, there was an interview with Tobias Fred Jones and Jonathan Hoeffler. Both are really heavyweights when it comes to type design, and they are well known for their work um, they did for Barack Obama's um, presidential run in 2008. The two talked so much about type nerd stuff, 
And Tobias more or less made the statement that his favorite, favorite Chinese restaurant is that one next to the badly current street sign. To let you know what badly current means, or what a badly current street sign is, badly current means that the letters within a word are placed in an unbalanced way. You can see this in my example here. So you could read the street sign in two different ways. In the intended one, Fifth Avenue, or like Fifth Avenue, just because the letters are a little bit misplaced. So watching this documentary, I thought, okay, these two type nerds just want to impress. They want to show off. Are they really looking that close at street signs? I was sure no one ever would pay so much attention to a profane thing like a street sign. But interestingly, um, the statement and what they said resonated with me in a strong way. I felt type really mattered for them. You know, these two guys are the biggest type nets in the world and it was just fun listening to them and inspired me. And so I started to consume from this time on everything I can get about typography. I read books, articles, studied the forms of fonts, everything, just because these two nerds inspired me in a strange way. And with my observations of the last couple of years, I have to say both were absolutely right. Today, I belong to these kind of guys who look at badly current street signs. Let's move away from these type nerd issues and think about the question, how would the world look alike, look, look alike without any type? Imagine you are at the airport and want to board your plane. How do you find your gate without proper signage? Type takes a guiding role here. Same goes for highway signage. How do you want to reach your destination without the written information on highway signage? Type gives you direction. Books. Probably one of the best examples here. In general, most documentation would not be possible without type. Type captures information. And I bet a lot of you know this book here. So if you know, just shout it out loud, please. Anyone? Exactly. It's Hooked by Nir Eyal, one of the standard books for, I would say, product, product designers, UX designers. And speaking about product and the internet, what about the internet? Most of the information we consume every day is written content, news, blogs, messages, stories, notifications, and so on. Everything has type in it. The majority of the products and services we use every day would not work without any type. I have a small example for this to demonstrate this. This is basically an Amazon product page for a white pair of sneakers. Now, let's think about, take out all the colors. Yes, color provides both guidance and it's a brand asset and it's also entertaining in some kind of way, but the general functionality of this product isn't lost. Now we take out the complete product photos and image assets. Yes, the shopping experience is now less fun because we as humans are very visually triggered, especially when it comes to fashion, but again, the basic functionality is still there. I would be able to buy a white pair of sneakers and I can proceed with the checkout. In the last example, let's take out all the type. Now it becomes interesting. Without type, the product would be completely useless. No search function, no product description, no price information, where do I click to buy, Where's my basket? Where and how do I enter my address? You see, type is needed for basic, basic 
functionality. Type matters when it comes to guidance, information, and functionality. And speaking of guidance and information, let's talk about accessibility. Imagine you're on subway on the way to work and you want to see some video content, but you actually forgot your headphones at home. What are you doing? You mute the sound, switch on the subtitles, and start to follow the content, the video content, by reading the subtitles. What seems to be a minor detail for people who have no problems with hearing is extremely important for those who can't. And now think about it. In Germany alone, there are around 80,000 deaf people who hear absolutely nothing. In addition, there are 60 million people with significant hearing problems. The simple detail of adding subtitles gives these over 16 million disabled people the opportunity to access information and understand video, visual content. Type matters for them. How is it actually with blind people? Even blind people need or can see through written text. This may sound paradox, but again, I have a small example here. Screen readers. Screen readers need written content which can proceed and convert it into acoustics, spoken words. The computer can read out these, spoke, these words out. I know this sounds kind of strange, but blind people are able to see through the text replace an image data or into code. And in this photo, you see a little boy playing with autumn leaves in the park. Type matters even when you can't see it. Let's summarize the important takeaways here. Type is an information carrier that affects us all. Type is a guidance giver that supports us in our everyday life. Type is an inclusion creator that connects people and information. And, not, and this is not all. Just as I can speak in different ways, evil, sad, or friendly, I can also use type to convey these feelings and emotions. Type is language, feelings, and emotion this has become visual. Type can be highly emotional and inspire thoughts of each individual. To demonstrate this to you, I, pre I prepared some little scenarios for experimentation, and you are very welcome to participate here within the chat. Let's start with the first scenario. Namely, you need a lawyer for a legal case. Which one would you choose and why? Please have a look on these three cards now and think about which lawyer you would take. Also to our live audience here, you're welcome. Which from these lawyers you would choose for a next legal case? Britta? That one in the middle? Kao? The one on the right? Okay. Christoph? Also, Katja? Jessica, the first one. Okay. Oh, I see. The poll is incoming. We have a strong direction for the third one. Mm -hmm. Okay. A couple of people voting for the second one. A couple of for the first. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, I see there is a significant vote for the third card, I would say. Thanks for participation so far. Um, I did this little experiment with some of my colleagues a couple of weeks ago, and this is actually the result. Except for one who probably wanted to have a little bit of fun, um, everyone else have chosen the card on the right. 
the following slides will give you some insight why they made this selection and maybe you want to compare um, this with your own thoughts you just had. The first card was perceived by the majority as untrustworthy. What is pre pretty interesting, um, they associated the font to internet memes. And yes, this font is called Impact and is mostly used and mostly known for internet memes. The second one was pushed into a military direction and also associated with the 80 series A team, which is kind of cool, but apparently not the right thing for a lawyer. The third card in this row gained a lot of positive attributes. Serious, professional, trustworthy, expensive. In addition, feminine attributes were added as well to the font. Someone suspected maybe this is a female lawyer. And I guess this is caused by the serif typeface, a typeface with little hooks at the end. Furthermore, some had to think about the movie American Psycho with Christian Bale, because there is a scene in this movie um, where a couple of lawyers discussing about the business cards and one of these cards looked more or less the same like that one. It's a great movie, I can recommend it, not only from a type perspective. Um, and I was really impressed by all these thoughts and impressions uh, made by my colleagues. Let's go to the second scenario. You're new in town and look for a restaurant to eat. How would you imagine the restaurant from the sign? Again, we have three different cards, only differ in a chosen type. And these are the thoughts from my colleagues. In the first one, we have a slightly handwriting type, and everyone recognized or associated this kind of font immediately with pizza. I think the other thoughts, ranging from romantic to Italian to French to bistro, goes pretty well with it. All in all, a little bit cheesy. I see someone is uh, laughing here maybe because of the Bloodhound uh, gang quote, but okay, let's switch to the ne next one. With the second card, we were instantly at terms like fast food, burger, steaks, heavy font, heavy food, anything but vegetarian. You can see the type makes here a difference. Lastly, we had a very simple font and I was amazed by the connections that were made. The complete opposite of the previous one. Organic, healthy, vegan, vegetarian, all the good stuff you like to eat. Scandic. Also, a term I never heard before, Instagrammable. So apparently this is a restaurant where people like to take pictures of their food and share them on Instagram and also doing selfies with duck faces and share them as well. So to any one of you who wants to open a restaurant in the near future, this is, this is trendy, a trendy restaurant one. This is the type to go, I would say. Anyhow, we come to the third and last scenario here, a very open one. You look at the word, what comes into your mind? Same like the previous scenarios, three cards, only differ in type, you noticed by now. In the first example, we have a font that looks more or less the same like the one used by... Um, oh, I'm sorry, I have to go back, sorry. In the first example, we have a font that looks more or less uh, like the logo from a series called Friends. And everyone who loves and likes the series would feel immediately positive connections. Also, some of my colleagues had the theme song of the series immediately in their head. Furthermore, the font was associated with terms like scouts or youth club, chalkboard, so apparently a lot of people were reminded during their time in school. In a second example, we have already at first sight strong connections. German, Deutschland, old German writing, Someone likes the font itself, but doesn't feel comfortable because of the historical background. I think everyone can see in which direction this is going, rather negative associations. You see, it's the same word as before, friendly, 
but the shape of the world gives completely different impressions, thoughts and connections. Let us come to the end of this little experiment with this card. The type in general gives impressions like modern or futuristic, is connected to the techno scene of the 90s, DJ Bobo, discos, tasteless hairstyles, but also a little bit connected to technical things like car tuna scene or car trade, and of course, to science fiction, Star Wars, Star Trek, and Mr. Spock. Now we have learned that type seems to trigger something in us. Emotions, thoughts, connections. But where's the connection to product design and what influence can type have there? You want to give your product or your brand values. Modern, serious, friendly, playful, to name a few. Type can send Type can support you exactly in this value communication. Type is the filter in the communication with your customers, and depending on which filter you choose, you communicate differently in a visual way with your customers. To illustrate this again, I have a sim simple example here. It's a relatively simple screen um, from our Zing product, and let's have a closer look at the type. Our product is set in Zing Suns. We heard this before. Uh, a font made by myself in the last year based on Fira Suns to make it available cross-platform on iOS, Android, and of course web. It's modern, has a certain friendliness, looks serious, but not too stiff at the same time. What would happen if we would replace the type by something more traditional? The whole design would immediately look a little bit more stiff, a little bit like a newspaper, and not mo more that lightweight. Apart from that, the font looks super nice and is super readable. It's um, New York by the Apple design team. How about a font mix of Arial and Impact, the mentioned meme font? I don't know about you, but it looks really heavy, dubious, reminds me of these famous big build Zeitung news headlines, and I don't know, I would say it doesn't represent our values we want to communicate. In this example, it's Ricoletta, one of the biggest trend typefaces of the past two years used by a lot of brands, products, and designers. The font is absolutely cool and has a very 17-ish vibe, um, but it also doesn't fit really well with the existing product design, and I would say also not to the values we want to communicate. It's not a match. Last example, famous Helvetica Light. Maybe some of you still remembers when Apple introduced uh, Helvetica Light to iOS 7 in 2013, and a couple of weeks later, the whole web was full of flimsy and flickering fonts. It's way too skinny, and from my perspective, not really engaging. It doesn't fit. I hope it became clear that depending on which type you choose, you can either completely support or completely destroy the perception of your product and how you visualize communication, written communication. And as a type expert, I'm glad to see that many brands, products, and services today like Netflix, Airbnb, Google, Nike, to name a few, have realized this and putting now a much more bigger effort and resources into type by creating custom typeface solutions and doing a lot of research in this area. Type matters when it comes to brand and product perception. Let's summarize the important takeaways here. Type is a thought amplifier that stimulates us. Type is an emotion facilitator that triggers our feelings. Type is a language visualizer and gives communication a color. We know now there's a lot in type. Emotion, information, inclusion, perception. We experience type in our everyday life. 
And type can even stand for something much bigger with a much greater meaning. And at the end of my talk, I would like to tell you one last story, which takes us into a very dark time. And when I heard the story for the first time, it really touched me and not only from a type perspective. This is Jan Liwacz, a Polish blacksmith who was arrested in 1939 by the German occupation force and deported by train to Auschwitz concentration camp in 1940. In Auschwitz, he was forced to make the gate for the camp. And you have to imagine how disgusting, horrifying, and evil it is that a prisoner has to make his own prison gate. I guess all of you know this picture or this gate, and I would um, like to see you all have a closer look on it, and maybe you will notice something. If we look at the B in the word Arbeit, we noticed this, that the B is upside down. Livac did not want to accept to make this gate completely without a fight and turned the B around in protest. Fortunately, neither the guard camps nor the camp direction ever noticed this, because otherwise Livac would for sure not survive the camp. The B itself stands today as a sculpture for the International Auschwitz Committee and it stands for something very important, to be remembered, to remember the crimes of this time. I was so impressed by the story, not only from a human perspective, but also because it shows how much power can be into type that it stand for protest, for fight, for rebellion, and even for a culture of remembering. In this sense, type matters, and thanks all for your attention. Thank you. <laughs>